Well, Elizabeth Moss, you had not one but two Emmy nominations this year. Uh, your standard nomination you get every year for Mad Men, but also the uh, the miniseries Top of the Lake, which uh, we were actually chatting with you a year and a half ago when you were in New Zealand shooting that. Um, what was the reaction to the the miniseries once once it got out into the public and people saw it? Um, wait, I just want to show you something. <laughs> Before we answer that really important question, I just want to show you. <laughs> Putting on a show for us. Putting on a little show for Gold Derby back there. Thank you very much, Ethel. Also going for a nomination this year. Um, okay, sorry, say that again. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what, once it got released, what was the reaction to the miniseries? What would people tell you about it? Um, for me, I was very kind of... I don't want to say surprised because I was a fan of it and I thought it was good, but at the same time it was a very dark piece and um, very unusual and sort of this six hour film. So the positive reaction to it for me was was really amazing and, and we premiered it at Sundance and we sort of got this immediate great response to it and it felt like we made it and you know which we did in in the bush of New Zealand it, by ourselves, you know. So to get the reaction that it got and have people respond to it was was like somebody responding to something that's very personal to you. So um, it was surprising. It was it was very very cool, and people, I think, uh, responded to it in many different ways. You know. Now, how did an uh, American actress like you come to a part uh, like that? When I first heard that it was uh, that you were cast in it, I remember thinking, "Oh, it must be an American, um, maybe an American detective on loan or something like that." But no, you you went for the whole accent and and yeah. you kind of immersed yourself in that world. Yeah, I uh, yeah at the very at the very very close to starting filming because uh, Peter Mullen, who's wonderful in it. Um, was doing his Scottish accent and then we had Holly Hunter doing her accent and everybody was sort of doing their own accents and I just was like there's no way that I could possibly just be American or something and Jane was like absolutely not. <laughs> so I had to kind of uh, fully invest. Um, it was just a, I auditioned for it and spoke to Jane about it and I always felt like it was a, like I probably told the story before, but I always felt like it was very much a long shot. I thought that they would cast an Australian or um, just someone more famous than me. Uh, so I was very, uh, very surprised. And I think that it, it just was, you know, based on um, Jane seeing what I did and, and seeing my connection to the role and, and being interested in exploring that further. She's very much the open-minded artist Jane you know she's not one of those people that is set on all oh, I have to have it my way um, so she I just just liked what I did and and was willing to kind of go on this scary adventure with me in our chat room um, let me pull this back up here on my page uh, Queen B says I was so impressed with your accent and top of the lake how did you prepare for that Oh, that's nice. Um, I had an incredible, incredible dialect coach named Victoria Maluska who worked with Jane before, worked with um, Kate Winslet um, on the film she did with Jane. And and so she was amazing. I mean, I could not have done anything without her. Uh, I've talked to her on the phone for, for a few months before I went to New Zealand. Um, but the, a lot of the work was in person once I got to New Zealand. Um, which I was sort of nervous about, but she was absolutely right, Victoria, in the sense that it's really best done in person. And so we would just get together every day for hours and talk. She would make me describe things around me and, and in the accent. Um, and then we got more and more and more specific and you know started doing line work and actual dialogue from the project. Um, but she was not there with me, unfortunately, during the... Um, for every scene, as you usually would have, um, so she supported me uh, with voice recordings and emails and phone calls, and she was—it felt like she was there, which was amazing. Um, but I never really felt like I—I I never. It's a very difficult accent, and I had to constantly be vigilant about it. I was never one of those people who was like, "Yes, I can just 
make phone calls to my mother and speak in the accent. It was it was hard the whole time. Well, you know, Rob, who co-hosted with me last time we talked a year and a half ago, he and I were talking uh, in the spring when this aired, and he said, you know, this accent, this is a very, it's not just, there's not just a New Zealand accent, just like there's not an American accent. He said this was very specific to that particular area and that particular region. He was very impressed. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, that's really nice to hear. Yeah, for me, it's like anytime anyone from that side of the world thinks it was okay, I get really, really happy. <laughs> um, it, we wanted it to be, Jane and Victoria and I wanted it to be very, just sp sort of specific to that, to the, to the whole area, not just uh, one town or city. It's like, you know, it's like our country. It's, it's like America. If you come from one side of, uh, you, of it, you sound completely different than if you come from another part of it. So we wanted it to be a sort of general kind of accent that was not, um, that wouldn't take you out of the story. That was the only thing that I cared about was just, I didn't want it to be distracting. I didn't want it to be, oh, look, Peggy Olson's doing an accent. You know, I just wanted you to forget about it. Another poster TV fanatic says that he loved you. Uh, uh, it could be a he or a she. Loved you in Top of the Lake. What was your favorite part about making it, and what was your favorite part about the finished product? Oh, oh God. Um, my favorite part of making it was, I think, just the role itself, you know, was just the um, the scenes that I got to do, and the role, and the acting I got to do, and the, you know, just the different moments that I got to play, and it was like a it was a dream come true as an actress, you know. So for me, it was the actual role and the acting that was my favorite part. And what was the second half of the question? Once you saw the finished product, what what maybe what was surprised you about the finished product, or what what was a favorite part of the finished product? Um, I think how moved I was by it. How you know when you shoot something like that so fast and you're doing. So so many things every day and you're just going from episode because we cross boarded it so we would go from episode three to to one to six in in one day and you'd I'd be working with Jane and then I'd be working with Garth the other director and so it was really fast and very much a whirlwind so to see it all come together as one story um, from beginning to end and be moved by the moments in it that I had maybe forgotten about because we only had this amount of time to shoot it and then we had to move on um, so for me, I think I was, I don't know if I was surprised because, you know, these are wonderful filmmakers, but I was very happy to see that it was a complete story and very moving, you know. I imagine the surprise sometimes for an actor or actress who's in, you know, certain portions of a project, but not all of them, is when you see it all pulled together, when you see how it, it, it's structured and it, it um, the way maybe things are, are pieced together when it's actually uh, airing. Sure, and just seeing things that you were even that you were in, you know, you don't like, you don't get to see them, and while you're while you're doing it, so, you know, just seeing something and being like, oh, that's what that looked like. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, at the Emmy Awards, beyond your nomination and, and some of the other ones, I bet you were particularly happy that somebody not well known to American audiences like Peter Mullen got nominated. Yeah, especially because I am such a big fan of his, and I think his performance in that is so incredible. And and I remember doing our first scene together, and I knew he was going to be amazing, but I did our first scene together, which was, uh, well, it's kind of our, our, I think our first scene in the, in the thing anyways, which is like with the dog. I don't want to like spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen it, but the dog's there, and it does not end well. Um and I was standing across from him watching him, you know, which is a great thing to do as an actor. When you, when an actor opposite you is so good that you forget what you're doing and you end up just kind of like, oh, wow, that's an amazing, amazing performance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I felt with him. I just was like, oh, shit, like he is going to, he's amazing. Like I couldn't take my eyes off of him. And so it's nice when a good performance you know, that, yeah, from somebody who is not necessarily s extremely well-known to an American audience, when other people see it, you're like, yes, that's what I, that's what I think. 
And your category at the Emmys, uh, uh, <laughs> when you looked at that list, I can't imagine what, what reaction you might have had, but you had Jessica Lange, Sigourney Weaver, Helen Mirren, and Laura Linney, ladies that you probably watched for years and years. What, what was your reaction when you just saw your that particular category? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like you look at something like that and people ask you, or people say to you, like, you know, do you think you're going to win or what do you think's going to happen? And, like, it sounds so cheesy to say and you feel like nobody's ever going to believe you. But when I, as an actress, who really, I really love what I do and I see a category like that with these women that I admire so much, to me, I'm like, that's where the conversation ends, you know. It, it, it's, it sounds so, like, Pollyanna, but it's like, yeah, that is amazing. I am, I am honored to be with those women. And end of story. We don't even, I don't even have to go <laughs> to the movies. <laughs> we could just say that's it. Like that was awesome. What happened? Um, yeah, every single one of them. You know, I mean, they're 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 the best. So for me, it's it's like the greatest compliment I could ever get. Well, some of them will uh, probably be nominated along with you at the Golden Globes and SAG Awards coming up soon. Uh, well, you've been up at the Globes. <laughs> well, uh, we we honestly, I think if you look at our prediction center, I think, especially at SAG Awards, I think we've got you winning there. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. That's you, awesome. You've been working since you were a little girl. I mean, I know you've got a couple of SAG Awards as part of the Mad Men Ensemble, but... What would that mean to you if, if they did uh, pick you out uh, as the winner at, uh, from the Screen Actors Guild? Well, it's like the old thing. I mean, everybody says it, so it's probably, like, boring now, but it's your peers, and it's, like, the it's the people that you work with and the people that you admire, and there's nothing better than that, you know? It just is it's just the, the way it is. It's to be recognized by the person that you have to act with or that you've seen on TV and you like is, is the best thing that you could that you know you could get so um, I think that's how everybody feels about SAG and it's also really fun it's a really fun award show. <laughs> yeah I bet that is one of the, the more um, interesting events because basically everybody in the room is an actor or an actress. Yeah so you know everybody you know <laughs> it's nice. Well in your long career you probably worked with half the people in that room. <laughs> we worked with a few of them, but also it's a great, it's a really great room to meet the people that you haven't worked with. Mm. We met, you know, last year I met Jennifer Lawrence, and that was like the coolest moment ever for me. <laughs> well, um, that I bet you are. Are you a film fan? What kind of films? Uh, what kind of films would uh, interest you the most? I'm kind of the worst at going to movies, like going to the movie theater, just because I'm lazy. Um, so I like to watch stuff on TV or on my computer. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, but I, I I I'm kind of one of those people that likes everything. I like the more artsy, you know, dark, dramatic stuff. But I'm also, you know, super excited about seeing the Hunger Games movie. So I like it all. Like a good mix of everything. Well, we just yeah. talked about Mad Men. Uh, you're are you shooting the seventh season at this point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we have heard that they're dividing up these last 14 episodes. Seven will air next spring. Seven will air the following spring. Do, are you going to go ahead and shoot all 14 in a row? Or how, how will that work from a production standpoint? I don't know if we're allowed to tell you. It's so funny. Like, I've gotten to this place with Mad Men where I'm literally afraid to tell you that I'm even on the show, <laughs> <laughs> which is ridiculous. Um, but... I don't even know if I can tell you that. I can tell you this, though. I like the way that we're doing it, and I think that um, I like that it's being broken up. I, w I loved watching Breaking Bad like that, and I think that, you know, it's great. It's I don't want the show to end, and I didn't want Breaking Bad to end, so it's nice to have that little bit of, oh, I get to have it in my life a little bit longer. And I, so I think it's nice for, for viewers and for fans to be able to see it that way. Now, this past season that we saw, which was the sixth season, uh, you had a lot of stuff going on. You started the year out at the other firm, and um, and we knew at some point, somehow or another, we felt like that you would get back over to uh, to to the original firm. Did you like the way that the the plot moved for you last year? Yeah, I really, really did. I really liked it, and um, I really loved the way that I got back to to Sterling Cooper and the way that. The you know I loved the idea of Draper and Shaw having to sort of work together and 
Um, you know, because I was sitting there going, how the hell am I going to get back there? I knew I was supposed to get back there, but I was like, how am I going to, what am I just going to quit this one and go back there? That seems stupid. So the idea of, of the merger was like, oh, that's brilliant. Of course, that's awesome. Uh, I loved it, and I loved the whole idea of um, how she had to, you know, she kind of got away from Dawn and then, you know, sort of, Godfather style was like sucked back in, you know, and, and um, couldn't get away from him, and then had to then falling in love, falling in love with Shaw, and then um, being stuck between the two of them, uh, sort of the two loves, you know, of her life, and in different ways. And so I, I, I loved it. I thought I had some really cool stuff to do, and I was really surprised by some things, which is which is a good place to be in your sixth season. In our chat room, uh, our poster, the Demon Hog, Riley, um, he brings up an issue here that I would want to ask you about. You have been really good over the years about uh, one of the few people, really, that was willing to, you know, move into a supporting category one year. You said, you know, your your role had been diminished a little bit and you wanted to go into supporting and you got nominated that year. And the last couple of years you've been in the lead. Uh, what goes into your decision on a given season when you make that call? Uh, it's kind of just like an... Uh a logical thing, you know, I think that our show is an ensemble show, and the supporting performances, you know, quote unquote, for me, I'm like, I, I like Christina Hendricks, you know, is sort of like, I'm like, wow, she's, you know, she's such a big part of the show. So for me, it's not a matter of like, oh, this one is better than the other. It's just a matter of logistics and, and how much you're a part of the show and how much screen time you have. And that year, I talked to Matt about it, and I was like, what do you think? I think that I should just, because I, I don't think you should have any ego about it. Um, so it just made more sense. I didn't feel like I had enough screen time necessarily to go up against the other women who, who might be in the category who are in almost every scene, you know, so it just becomes like a logistical thing and there's so many incredible supporting performances on TV that it's, I, I don't think it's a, a good or a bad thing, it just is a matter of screen time. Now the episode you submitted this past uh, summer was The Better Half and in that one, among other things, you got to uh, stab your boyfriend accidentally, <laughs> Leslie, accidentally. Um, <laughs> What did you like about that particular episode? Um, obviously, I was in a lot of it, which is kind of a big factor in the decision. You know, you you figure that people see the show, so you just want to you just want to pick something that you're in a lot of. Um, and for me, I I love that the the end of that episode where she's stuck in between Shaw and Draper's offices to me was very emblematic of her arc for the season. So as an actor, I felt like oh, that's a good representation of. Um, what's happening for her that year and then also I felt like it had a lot of different things in it I thought it had some you know a lot of comedy obviously um, you know and then tragedy at the end and I, I it was just an episode that I felt had a lot a lot in it a lot of different things in it it's a weird decision to try to make because you're like you're trying to basically be like this is what I think is the best <laughs> Well, you know, some don't like to make that decision at all. They don't. They want to be, in fact, totally clueless about it. And let somebody, their producer or somebody, uh, make the decision. And some like to be really, really involved. And I think it works both ways. It's just a matter of somebody taking charge of it and, and trying to make a good choice. Well, I like to make the choice because I'm, then I'm in this situation where you ask me or someone asks me, why did you pick that? And I like to be able to to say why, you know, so that right. it came from me and it's not just an arbitrary an arbitrary thing. Well, you know, some people don't even like to watch their own show, so or watch their own performances. So, um, you know, <laughs> at least at least you, you enjoy I, Mad Men. I I I don't always watch everything on the show. I don't always watch every episode. So, uh, I did have to like watch some stuff that I hadn't seen yet <laughs> when I picked that episode. Uh, you know, I've never heard you talk about this, uh, but I'd love to know. Back in two thousand seven, when the show started. You know, AMC, I mean, you guys put AMC on the map, and then, of course, Breaking Bad comes along, and now it's a real network and, and, and obviously a big awards uh, contender every year. But, you know, that was a risk for every one of you involved uh, to take a show onto a network like that. Why did you want to take that role, and how did you come up uh, to take it? It seems like one of those things that you kind of look back on, and you're like, God, like, what? 
was a bit of a bit of a risk, but at the time it just felt right. And I remember when I when I auditioned for it, meeting Matt and thinking, and I called my manager afterwards and I said, I want to work with that guy. Um, I just wanted to work with him. I just really liked him. And then there was the script, which was so good and so much better than anything else that I was reading, film or television or whatever. Um, and I loved that part. I just, I really liked Peggy and I really liked playing her. And I never wanted to do a reg, I never even wanted to be a regular on a show necessarily. Um, and this was one that I was like, it just seemed like the right thing to do. And it, and it, you know, we had some pedigree because Matt was coming off of The Sopranos and Scott, you know, Hornbacher as well. And so it wasn't a complete shot in the dark. But, um, it's just one of those moments where you're like, this feels right, and I think I'm going to take this risk. Well, regardless of quality, as you well know from you know movie scripts and TV scripts, sometimes great ones never get seen, and sometimes exactly. awful ones become big hits. So, you, you know, it, it's exactly. tough. We were, you know, in a way, you're just kind of doing the pilot. You're signing on for those two weeks of work. I mean, we, you know, we, there was definitely a, a, you know, a thought of like, well, this could be it, and hopefully not, but... You know, you you don't often expect something that is really different or not what is usually out there. That that usually doesn't make it through. Um, so in this case, it did. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I know I know from talking to all of you Mad Men actors over the last couple of years, you're not going to tell me anything about next season, uh, even though you are shooting it. But at least tell me that that you like the way it's going. <laughs> that I can tell you. I do. I really like the way it's going. And, um, yeah, I really, really do. I wish I could tell you stuff. Um, it's super I can't deep. imagine from your standpoint or any of you or any show that shoots, you know, well in advance, just holding on to secrets like that for so many months. I know. It's so annoying. <laughs> is, it, is it just total, total relief once something airs? Yeah, it is. Although by then you're sort of moved on to something else, you know. So um, you just get excited about it, and and I I like it, and I'm a fan as well. So you want to tell people, but obviously we're so I think I'm so used to not pe telling people that it's fine. But to answer your question, yes, I am really happy with where it's going, and um, we're at the very beginning, so I don't really have much. Anyways, look. Special special guest again. There, there she you're, you're going to get all the cat lover votes on the uh, Globes and SAG Awards. I'm so excited. I'm, and I hope it just does not turn off the cat haters. Or the dog lovers may not vote for you, but... but. I like dogs, too. I like dogs, too, dog lovers. Vote for me. Vote for me. What's your cat's name? That's Ethel. Okay. Um, I have two. They're named Lucy and Ethel after... Obviously, I love Lucy. Anyways, <laughs> um, well, what's it, have you even thought at all about that final day of shooting when they say that's a series wrap for Elizabeth Moss and what that's going to feel like? Yeah, I have. I really have. It's been it's been something that you know I thought about a lot more before this season started. And then once the season starts, you sort of go into work mode and you're just you're just doing what you have to do. But um, for me, the crazy thing is, yeah, that moment when they say cut and that's the end of that and I will never play her again um, is a very strange thing for me. I played her. Well, when we wrap the show, I'll have been working on it for nine years. So for me, that's a very strange feeling that that's going to be that that's going to be done. Well, I've, I've met Matt before and talked to Matt before and please pass along one little advice from all of us or at least for me, I don't know if anybody else cares, somewhere in your final episode, I want Peggy carrying a box somewhere. Aww. <laughs> okay. That's been um, such a, a vital part of your character over the years, you carrying a box from one office to another, from one job to another, from one promotion to another. Oh, my God, you're so right. That's so funny. I totally will. I will tell him, I promise. I can't guarantee anything, but hopefully it won't be because I'm, like, fired or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, would, I would not think so. I, I've, okay. always, I've always predicted, um, see, now that I say these things, they all have to say it. We can't go that way now because it's out there. But I know. I've always thought that you would be some kind of partner by the final episode. Don't, don't, yeah, careful. Don't say anything. Don't say what you want, because we want it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much. We want to see you at the Globes nominated. We want to see you at SAG Awards nominated. And I 
of course, the Emmy Awards are way long away, but that'll that'll take care of itself. Well, that's, thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and thank you for the Gold Derby Award. That was like this the coolest thing ever to hear. So I really I was totally honored and flattered, and that was really nice. You won to, several over the years. Well, it's always it's really nice because it's like you guys are the experts, and you guys seem to know what you're talking about. So, I, well, remember now, you've got people like me that that pretend to know, you know, and we get we get to actually be out there, but when we do those awards, we throw that open to everybody in the world that wants to vote that's on our website. So it's, you know, I think over a thousand people vote and they're all, if you watch them ever in the forums, they're they're TV lovers. I mean they love television. They talk about it day after day after day. So when you get an award from those people, that's they know what they're talking about. That's what I'm saying. It's like people who actually see everything and have seen everything that year, and it actually it really does mean something. It's I was really excited about it. So thank oh, you. You're, you're very welcome. You um you've you've been a real light on Mad Men all these years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, have a great holiday season, and thanks for joining us. Goodbye, Ethel. Bye, Gold Derby.